Returning back to the topic of vectors, um, this is a question which wasn't done as well as we would have hoped because actually the working for it is quite straightforward, um, but several students just kind of missed a, a crucial part of this or uh, saw, saw the part of this question that was missed but didn't know how to use it. So let's have a look together. Consider the line r equals, uh, and here's your position, 2, 1, 3, plus lambda of 0, negative 1, 3, there's the direction. Determine the vector equation of a line which passes through this point, 2, 3, 1, which is perpendicular to the line above and parallel to the yz plane. Okay, so let's just stop for a moment and try and understand what's going on. What we've been given is a particular line, um, and because we're in three dimensions, um, we really need to use vectors um, to state the equations of these lines because it, it captures all the components, oopsie daisy, captures all the components that we're looking for, x, y, and z. This one equation is equivalent to three parametric equations, one for x, one for y, and one for z. Now, we want to find a new line, or the equation of a new line, um, that passes through some other point, 2, 3, 1, and we want it to have these characteristics. It's perpendicular to this line. Now, I want you to remember, if you're trying to be perpendicular, this is a question of direction, right? So when you're talking about perpendicularity here, or orthogonality, as it turns out, um, you really need to pay attention to this direction vector up here, right? You want some uh, new direction vector, which when you, you know, compare these two, you should find that they are at right angles. And hopefully you are remembering the piece of knowledge that will help you here is that uh, when you take the dot product of two vectors that are perpendicular, um, you should get a dot product of zero, right? Now that's, that's all fine. Most people are pretty good at that. However, it's this last piece that most people completely missed. This new vector that we're about to find out, not only is it perpendicular to line R, it's also said that it's parallel to the yz plane. Now, why is this important? And the answer is, if you think about um, any given vector in three dimensions, so I'm just gonna use my pencil as an example of a vector, right? whichever way it is facing, there are actually infinitely many vectors that are perpendicular to this vector that pass through a particular point, okay? Let's just suppose like the middle of my pencil was the particular point that we were interested in, and I said, hey, can you find another, um, another vector, the equation of another vector that passes through this point and is perpendicular. And the answer is, you can find infinitely many if I pick up another pen. If you just imagine it like this, right, um, said in the middle there, right, so here is a vector that's perpendicular, right, but if I say, well, hold on a second, uh, let's twist it around. This is another vector that's also perpendicular, and so is this one, and so is this one, and I can just go around infinitely many times, right? Um, there's no reason why I have to like be locked into one or the other. Now, that's why this last piece of information is so important, that it is parallel to the yz plane. So if you can imagine like the yz plane is like somewhere off to here, right? Well, this vector that I'm holding right now is no longer parallel to the yz plane. It's gonna collide straight with it. Uh, if I sort of angle it a little bit, um, it is still, or I don't have enough fingers, um, if I get that one right there, it's still perpendicular to my original vector, still passes through my special point in the middle, but if my yz plane is here, right, um, even though I don't directly collide with it straight away, eventually this vector is going to go and it's going to collide back where I positioned that, right? So there is only a single vector like this, I guess, pointing right at you that's going to be parallel to this plane and also perpendicular to the original vector that I specified. So that's why you need that piece of information and very few students, um, or disappointingly few students, knew how to use it. So let me try and uh, illustrate to you how I would do it. This is part B, so how does our working actually play out? Well, the first thing that I want to say is, okay, here's the original vector, or, yep, the original line, I should say. Original line, which is R equals, um, and it was given to us as 2, 1, 3 plus lambda of 0, negative 1, 3. So there's the original line, right? Now, the new line needs to pass through 2, 3, one and so that the first easy thing to say is oh okay um, two three one is going to be the position right so I can say the new line is going to have to be r equals um, and I'm going to get onto an easy way to get onto the point two three one is just to make that my position vector 
2, 3, 1. Now, I then have to work out the direction vector, and this is the tricky part, right? Now, normally I would say, oh, let's just pick some arbitrary coefficients here, pop them in and see what happens, right? Like I could call them A, B, and C. However, if I look back at the question and this piece of information that everyone sort of missed a little bit, right? If you have a look and see um, that this is parallel to the YZ plane, parallel to the YZ plane, what that means is the X component has to be zero. Let me say that again, right? If you're parallel to the YZ plane, your X component has to be zero. Um, an easy way to compare that is just to think back to two dimensions, right? So if I were to draw for you, uh, here is uh, you know, our good old Cartesian plane. And I said to you, oh, okay, what does, a, um, what does an equation that is, or a line rather, that's parallel to the X axis, what does it look like, right? Well, if you've got something that's parallel to the X axis, axis like so, um, it's going to be y equals something or other, right? There's no x component in that line because as soon as you introduce some x component, you're no longer going to be. Like if it was, you know, uh, y equals, I should say like this is some constant like c. Uh, as soon as you introduce some x component like x plus 1 or x plus c or whatever, right, you're now at an angle. So you're going to go back and collide with the x axis. So my point here is that you can't have this x component in there, right? So when you're parallel to that, um, that's what it means that it's parallel to the yz plane. So therefore, to be parallel to the yz plane in three dimensions, what we really need is for the x component to be zero. So I'm going to go ahead and write that straight away, that I'm going to have a zero there, that's known, and then it's the other two, the y and the z bits, they're allowed to vary, right? So therefore, because they're unknown, um, I'm going to say, well, let's call that a, let's call that b, and um, I have no i vector since I am parallel to the yz plane. So this is my new line, um, so it passes through this part here, passes through the particular coordinates I need, 2, 3, 1, and then this part here tells me I'm parallel to the yz plane. Oops, not they, the yz plane. Okay, excellent. Now I'm ready to go. I can actually do that computation that I was mentioning before about the dot product, right? Um, when you take these two directions, uh, two direction vectors here, if they are really perpendicular to each other, then when you do the dot product, you should find an answer of zero. So therefore, let's see what happens, right? I'm gonna go uh, zero, negative one, three, dot, zero, a, b, that ought to equal zero, uh, let's just move this onto a line, since vectors are perpendicular. Like, this is the reason, I'm not just pulling this out of a hat, um, the reason I'm getting a zero dot product is because of this perpendicularity, right? Uh, and now it's just a matter of just computing this, right? So I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna you know, multiply my x components, which is zero, multiply my y components, multiply my z components. So I'm gonna get minus a plus three b equals zero, equals zero. Um, so therefore A equals three B. And you might say, well, hold on, Mr. Wu, we've got, um, you know, infinitely many solutions to this, right? Because A can take on any value. And once it takes on any value, a different value pops out for B, right? Why is that so? And the answer is, if you look at this, well, the direction vector can be any multiple of these so long as your, your lambda is appropriate, right? So therefore, you know, say if this was zero, one, two, it would be exactly the same as another direction vector, 0, 2, 4, because it's heading off in the same proportion, right? In exactly the same way that you could have, um, you know, y equals 2x plus 5, and you could also have 2y equals 4x plus 10. Like, you just multiply it all by 2, it's still the same line. So that's why you get infinitely many solutions here. You just have to designate, just pick a number, pick a convenient thing, right? So if I say let uh, b equal to 1, that will make a equal 3, and that's convenient. So let b equal 1, that means a equals 3, and that should do it, right? I can say, therefore, my new line is going to be equal to, uh, what was I on? 2, 3, 1. 2, 3, 1 plus lambda of 0, uh, 3, 1, like so. That's all there is to it. Um, I suppose I could write that um, in, you know, component form, but uh, it's, you know, the original line was given to us in column form, so I'm pretty satisfied with that. So 
please be mindful, like the hard part of this, this is not a hard question to compute, you can see. There's hardly any working compared to some of the early questions we've been looking at, but it's really the thinking that you needed to employ.